Welcome to Just Energy Radio with your host, naturopath and medical intuitive, Dr. Reed Louise. We have learned from Einstein's theory that matter and energy are one. Physicists believe that all systems in nature have their own particular way of vibrating. From the swinging of a pendulum to the waves of the ocean to the light that brightens the sky each day, each of these oscillates at its own unique rate. The same holds true for every thought, feeling, event, or word we speak. Each has its own frequency or rate of vibration. What many of us don't realize is when we take everything in our universe down to its simplest form, it is all just energy. Join Dr. Rita Louise on a journey through time and space where past, present, and future collide. Today, what you believe may be called into question. What we want to know is, who made up the rules? Be brave and step outside the box. We are about to turn our world upside down and venture into the unknown. Hold on. We are departing our own beliefs and entering alternative realms. Enjoy the possibilities. Hello and welcome to Just Energy Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Rita Louise, and thank you all for tuning into the show today. We are going to have so much fun. We're going to be speaking to Meg Blackburn Losey about energy and energy medicine, which you know is one of my favorite topics. And she has a great new book called Touching the Light, What Miracles Are Made Of. Before I bring Meg on, of course, our our little announcements. Just Energy Radio is brought to you by SoulHealer.com and the Institute of Applied Energetics, where you can learn to become a medical intuitive, energy medicine practitioner, or intuitive counselor. To keep up with all the exciting programming we have coming up, please do sign up for our newsletter. Uh, You can do that by going to the Just Energy Radio website. That's www.justenergyradio.com. You can also get access to, and just think about this, in a couple more weeks, five years, yes, five years worth of archives of excellent programming just like this. How exciting is that? Anyway. Let me tell you a little bit about Meg, and we will get her on the air. Meg Blackburn Losey, Ph.D., is the host of Cosmic Particles Internet Radio Show. She is the author of the just-released Touching the Light, the best-selling The Secret History of Consciousness, Parenting the Children of Now, Conversations with the Children of Now, the, the international bestseller, The Children of Now, Crystalline Children, Indigo Children, Star Kids, Angels, and the Earth, and the Phenomenon of Transitional Children. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Pyramid of Light, Awakening to Multidimensional Reality, and the Online Messages. She's also a contributor to the Mystery 2012 Anthology. So please welcome to Just Energy Radio, Meg Blackburn Losey. Hey, Meg, how's it going? Hey, Rita. Great. Thanks for having me on. I've been looking forward to this. Me too. I, I feel like, you know, we're kind of kindred spirits. You know, we both do similar work. And I'm mm-hmm. so glad w- about with your new book because you touch on things that I don't really involve myself with. So I'm actually looking forward to kind of picking your brain and... and uh, Learning some I'm more an open myself. Book. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get into this whole area in the first place? I always think it's interesting to hear people's stories, especially when they get into, you know, healing and intuitive work, because we all come from different places. We do, don't we? <laughs> yes, well, we you do. know, I've been intuitive my whole life and was made fun of like a lot of other people and just kind of stopped talking about it. And um, then when, then about 15 years ago, well, it started to open back up when I was in my 20s, I guess. And then about 15 years ago, I had a really deep, nasty, dark night of the soul. I mean, if I created it in life, it fell apart over about a two-week period. Um, everything that I had done, I looked around and, you know, home, love, life, work, everything was in the dirt. And I remember waking up on my friend's couch one morning just crying my heart out. And I wasn't dreaming that I can recall. You know, I had nothing in my mind. It was, in fact, it was blank, as I recall. But I was just crying. I was just releasing all this emotion. And I said, self, you know, we have to lay here until we get this. We have to really look at this because I always say we. I don't know why. <laughs> and uh, 
<clears throat> we have to figure this out. So I started looking at everything, and I realized two things really quickly. Um, first of all, I didn't like me very much. And second of all, I was living life based on what I thought everybody else wanted me to be, and none of it was true, my truth. And I didn't know what my truth was or what I wanted or who I meant to be and all of that. And so I said aloud to nobody in particular, nobody was there, I, I thought, <laughs> whoever I am, whatever this is, I accept and I'll tell you, those are the two most powerful words we can say if they're done with humility and, and heart. And I, I, from there, I just kind of launched on a journey to learn how to tell myself the truth so I didn't get into those kind of situations again. And to tell people uh, the truth, you know, um, after I got myself squared away, and uh, that was hard. You realize how guarded you are when you start making an effort uh, not to BS anymore, you know. And and so, but interestingly, the more I let down my guard, the 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 more my intuitive nature started to blossom. And I and I got to a point where I call it my series of cosmic two by fours because I had so much coming in so fast and so much energy building up inside of me, I couldn't find the go button to release it. And it, it was uncomfortable, and so I started doing this movement thing every morning with music, and and just kind of following the energy around. And I got very, very in tune with myself and what was around me. And and I kept saying, "Somebody show me what to do." I mean, by then I'm back on my home and on my mountain in North Carolina, and I kept saying, "Somebody show me what to do." Well, one day, when I said that, all of a sudden in front of me there's this beautiful holographic being. He was very large. It was gorgeous. Just shimmering and of course i jumped straight up and straight back about 10 feet and he disappeared and i and i was like oh my god i blew it <laughs> and uh and uh, i quickly centered myself again and there he was patiently waiting for me and i finally realized about three years after it happened and i was telling this story that he hadn't gone anywhere i had as soon as i got mental he disappeared so anyway he, he was the beginning of a series of a succession of different masters uh, for lack of anything else, I never asked their names, um, who taught me about creation and consciousness and, and different sciences and, and healing. And and um, they started rotating bodies in front of me holographically of people that I knew and showing me energy anomalies in the field, uh, in their energy fields, and, and how to transmute that or, or do different things. And, and I started touching people, human beings, and um, over time and following up and saying, well, what's different in your life today? You know, and, and I started to see patterns in what was happening. And not only could the physical body change, but the entire life experience could change. And, and it just kind of evolved over the last years, you know. And, and, and by now I've um, encountered thousands of people, <laughs> worked with thousands of people, and I'm still learning. It's a constant of evolution, you know. We're constantly becoming reattuned with the shifts and changes in energy over time. Well, I mean, that's one of the things about doing this kind of work is that there's always something new. Mm -hmm. I, it, it never astonishes me where I'll look at someone and go, hmm, that's interesting. Never seen that before. And they, they are like freaking <laughs> out. And it's, like, <laughs> and it's like, no, 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 it's not bad. It's like, but it's just kind of weird. <laughs> I'm just reporting it. Really? Yeah. yeah, well, that's new. Huh. I always make it fun, you know, because I don't want to scare anybody. <laughs> it's only my curiosity that's bringing it up anyway, usually, because uh -huh. it is some, you know, and, and things are different, and the, and the the harmonics are changing, particularly lately. Uh, you know, some of the bodies are literally changing color, and and um, there there's just a lot of shifting and changing going on in the energy fields and the in the frequencies, and and uh, I'm I'm strangely gifted. I can actually see um all of these things and inside of bodies and i'm full sensory outside of my body so it's kind of it's kind of uh it, really powerful when you count encounter some of these different things you know these changes and uh fascinating to me i just i stay fascinated so i have to tell you i have a book called avoiding the cosmic two by four <laughs> seriously <laughs> i do seriously Huh? And why would you want to do that? They must mean it in a different context. Well, it, it's meant in the context of where physical disease is the ultimate two by four of the universe trying to get your attention. Oh no, mine was mine was awakening. Well, that's what I meant by that. You know, I right. people would yeah. say, "Well, what can you do?" And I would say, "Well, what day is it?" You know, I don't know <laughs> what I can do. I don't know what this is. It's just bigger than me, and uh, 
it was a it was an interesting time, you know, because there wasn't anybody that could mentor me. And uh, you know, when you start going multidimensional and you watch yourself watching yourself doing something to yourself on on an etheric table, it gets kind of mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I just, but, I, you know, I think, really, Rita, I think that um, having those experiences on my own, uh, alone like I was, I got so much more out of it because I didn't talk myself out of things. You know, I didn't have a need to know who, what, why, when, how, or where. All I, all I kept saying was show me because I didn't, I, didn't ha- I didn't have a frame of reference for this, so I couldn't even form an opinion. And and I think I got a lot more out of it because I didn't have to define it, and because I was so raw, I was just open to it, and I and I think that's why um, it got as expanded as it did, as quickly as it did. But that's cool. I mean, just the fact that you were willing to put your own opinion to the side and just accept what you were receiving, what you were seeing, what you were sensing as, okay, this is what I'm getting, and not filtering it or going, okay, well, that doesn't make sense, so I'm just going to put it over there. I had no defenses left. (laughs) I had nothing nothing left at that time. I'm telling you, it was raw. So so there, I was an an, an empty pallet. I, I could do anything, and I took that very seriously, and... I had no idea what's going to take me to these kind of places. And now here you are. Yeah, because I didn't set out to do it. You know, I, I just, I didn't try to do it. And I think that that's another really important part. The harder we try, the less likely it's going to happen. Unrelated question: What kind of, what were you doing prior? What kind of work were you doing? I was a real estate broker. So this is definitely this like on. a big old step <laughs> <laughs> to somewhere else. Yeah, I was one of the best in the county though because I was so intuitive. It was a, you know, it was a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. But uh I I got to the point where I couldn't do it anymore. There was so much lack of integrity and when we got into negotiations uh, on different things and um and people would just get darn right ornery and and I could see what was going on and I knew what they really were after and it it got very hard for me because I was trying to be the middle person and and make everybody happy when I, you know, when I was seeing things that were just really not okay with me. Um, mm-hmm. I, I couldn't, I, one day I just stopped. I walked into the office one day and I looked around and I said, I don't belong here anymore. I have to go now. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> I didn't plan that either. I just, I, I got dressed. I went to work. I looked around and I said, no, I can't. I, I turned in my uh, lockbox keys and off I went and haven't ever looked back. Cool. Mm-hmm. I got laid off. That was like... And the guy to severance pay was like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> you don't have to kick me in the butt twice with that. Right, one. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> okay, so let's 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 turn to the book. Um, so we're going to be talking about your book, uh, Touching the Light: What Miracles Are Made Of. And I think where I want to start is from your perspective. Why do we get sick? Because obviously, if we don't get sick, then we don't need healing. <laughs> Well, there, there's two. I have two different perceptions on this, Rita, and and there are reasons for that. Um, first of all, we're we're in a biological body. I'm going to do the 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 unexpected first, okay? We're in a biological mm-hmm. format. My my guys, I call them my guys, they because they're still with me. They call it a biosphere, okay? <laughs> we're in this we're in this biological format in in a in a third dimensional world on the earth, okay? We're made of the same minerals as our planet, and we're subject to infestation and inhabitation. Sometimes we just get bugs, you know, of all kinds. <laughs> And and the other piece is, and you know, and and that's okay. That's just part of our format, and and we just deal with it. But the other piece of that is, and the main reason we get pain and illness, and you know, outside of the obvious everyday cold or or parasites or whatever, the reason that is is because we we get different issues in our. We have this whole beautiful system. It's all different colors and frequencies and layers and, and levels of being and in all of that it, it in any given moment it's a culmination of everything we've ever been in all of our lives now you want to talk about a lot of life experience you just look at an energy field okay now when we're in our everyday lives sometimes we don't deal with things very well or we pick up um energies or 
other things from other people in our environment and though so we get irregularities in our system we get we might get blockages we might get um areas of frequencies that get out of harmony uh, which is very common uh, we might pick up different anomalies of different forms of, of energy that's kind of crystallized in different ways. And there's so many different things that can happen. And they and they happen mostly when we are not dealing with our stuff and or we're not letting ourselves be in tune with ourselves. And when we're defended, you know, we walk around life with a shell on. We don't let people see who we really are. We try to do our best to please everybody, and none of that is is what we really want to be doing. And when we do that, and we get densities, and then those densities cause malfunctions, and and there there are all kinds of different levels and and, and possibilities of those kind of occurrences, depending on on how much of that we're doing and and to what degree. So I mean, and that's just one example. And it's you know what really bothers me is a lot of people come to me and they you know something something's going on with them and they say what did i do to do that well what did i do and it, and i have to honestly say it isn't always that sometimes we just aren't aware it doesn't mean we're at fault we're taught to be at fault but that doesn't mean we are sometimes we choose ignorance and then i have another answer for that but <laughs> you know <laughs> but but um, but generally speaking, it's just things that get out of attunement and out of tune in our. We're, we're like this great big symphony, symphony of energy. Okay, we're like a, a a whole arrangement of musical chords that all together make us, and we're the music of us. And if anything at all gets out of attunement in that symphony, it's gonna it's gonna have problems because um, everything is reliant on everything else in the energy field, and it and it's constantly communicating. Both ways, both out to the universe. This is what this is what Meg's experiencing right now. So this is what you should bring her back, you know. And and inwardly, well, here's the instructions from creation, based on the information you've sent. Here's what we're bringing back to you. So we're constantly getting fed exactly what we're putting out, or what we're what we what we the message we're putting out, even if we mean it or not. So we, you know, it comes to being intentional about our actions and our thoughts every energy that we expend comes back to us in some way and yeah i know that a lot of people say that but i can show you how it's true i did in the book (laughs) yeah (laughs) um i have a thing i have a thing okay about you know when i first got into kind of when when all of this was happening to me the first thing i did was seek everything metaphysical because i needed to somehow correlate what was happening well i couldn't find anything but everybody kept telling me, oh, well, you are the light, and, and, and you can manifest. and you can. I'm like, what the heck does this stuff mean? And I wanted to know, so the guy showed me over time. That was, that was my, my must have been, I must have put it out there because one of the first things that they did was show me how I am the light and, and what it does and why it's important and, you know, all these other things. So, anyway, I have a thing about you know, but- just terminology. I like to know what it means. You know, but when we're in our own body, it's like we don't necessarily, I mean, you know, you kind of brought it up with the the awareness, you know, but we don't necessarily recognize, you know, our own bad, I like to say mojo because it sounds kind of fun. You know, or, you know, and what we're putting out there might be negative or it might be limiting in some aspect, and but we don't realize. And it's sometimes all you have to do is raise somebody's awareness and go, but, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, that part. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, I have worked, I mean, mean, I've been doing this, all right, a little longer. Uh, But in in the healing or even in the healthcare area where they really do believe in the mind, body, spirit, and I'd like to get your opinion because mine differs from um, what I hear a lot of people saying. They go, well, you know, you were experiencing this, so what was going on like two weeks ago or a month ago or six months ago? Do you feel that the timeline is that short, or do you feel that there are actually triggers that go back further in time? Oh, yeah, there are triggers that could go back literally lifetimes. We can actually come in with energy around a certain thing, and it will manifest as a dysfunction for us somehow. Um, so now I, the only time I might disagree with that, you know, that it can be really, really long term. 
Um, usually it's relative to this life, and it's usually relative to emotional mental, or mental aspects. But um, there, I had a, oh, the only time I differ about that is like when somebody has an injury. Somebody falls down and breaks something. Often the thoughts they were having right before that happened are really important to the uh, to the uh, experience, you know, um, or or somebody's resisting, you know, resisting something that they could be stepping into or something, and what do they do? They fall down and break a, break a foot or an ankle. Can't step into it if I can't walk, right? So right. I mean, there's, there's 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 two. I have two perceptions on that, but generally speaking, yeah, it could it could be. And and you can literally track the timeline. I could teach people how to do that. And you can actually go back and and call it nearly exactly when it started. You may not know what the issue or the experience was, but you can track it time wise. Mhm. You brought up a good point, which I did have a question somewhere on my list, but I'm not seeing it right in the moment, so I'm just going to uh, ask it now. Um, is about past lives. Um, I mean, my perception is that there are some times where you have past life influences that are definitely impacting the person's health in this current life. In your work, how often do you see that? Because there are a lot of people that are like, oh, well, it must be a past life thing. It's like, you know, well, can we like keep to this lifetime and kind of work on that first? I mean, because I guess part of me feels like, well, maybe they want to use it as a cop-out. Well, I was dealing just going with to this say, life issue. I hear it more as an excuse or a cop out than than I see the reality of it. Now, that doesn't mean to say that past life influences aren't happening. And so, you know, people, somebody will say, "Well, tell me about all my past lives." I say, "Well, why? You know, what do, what difference does it make? Is there what? So, what I'll ask is, are you having a repetitive pattern?" Do you wake up saying, why am I always in, involved in this kind of thing? You know, then if you've got a karmic thing going on, and that karmic thing may have started in a past life somewhere. And you can track that, and you can, and you, can you know, give somebody some ideas how to finish that karma a little less painfully. But, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I think past lives is overused as an excuse for, you know, people – People don't want to own the fact that they're not dealing with their stuff. You know, we're so desensitized, we don't even know we have stuff. We we, we have no idea that we have things going on a lot of the time. So so how can we deal with it when we're not even sensitive to it? And, you know, we're, we're constantly getting bombarded by the media. We're, we're getting, you know, too much information, too much of the time. Um, most of it's not relative to our experience as human beings anyway. And we we get numb, and so we can't find those parts of ourselves that are screaming, "Hey, do something different," or "Hey, pay attention," unless we stop and be still and listen to ourselves. Listen. And that's not always easy. <laughs> listen. Yeah. No. I want a little pill. Please give me a little pill. It's easier. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, think I, am that, you. I think drug commercials should be made illegal, and I think the pharmaceutical companies should be fined for for even what they're doing to humanity because they're making us so dependent. Well, I mean, they had to take the cigarette commercials off. I know. They should take those off, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, you were talking about subtle energy, and maybe we can spend a little time talking about subtle anatomy. You know, the parts of our bot, you know, us, that, um, and how maybe it affects our health, how issues with our subtle energy affect our health. You want me to give you kind of a quick rundown through the system? Yeah, for the listeners. <clears throat> okay. Basically, we we have our physical self that we can see where it's it's our densest part. It's It's of our entire system. And coming into the physical self, there is a, a, a tube of energy that is often known as the pranic tube or the where the chi comes in our body. And that comes in through our crown and, and exits out around our tailbone. From there, the, we have the chakra system. Now, a lot of people think that chakras are flat spinning discs that, that are on our bodies. Well, they're not. They're actually four-sided pyramids. 
and they have vortexes inside and they have spheres inside and both the vortex and the sphere, one one spinning vertically, one spinning horizontally, both spin clockwise, and that's how the chakras keep their balance. They are rooted into the the pranic tube. So they pick up energy from the pranic tube and they distribute it outward to the meridian system. The meridian system is what um, acupuncturists use and and is used a lot in Chinese medicine. They're little secondary highways that run through the body and distribute the energy that the chakra is feeding to them. They have lots of points, um, little little way stations along the way that are relative to different parts of our system. Then um, we have two great big vortexes, one coming into the high heart area on the chest and another coming into the mid abdomen at what's what a lot of people call the Dantian area, so between the second and third chakras. The upper one um, is real, uh, kind of a light yellow in color, and it's uh, it's relative to all of our aspects multidimensionally in our timeline. Um, that's our self aspects. So what's happening is that's spinning clockwise. And that's feeding information outwardly, and, and past, present, and future can be tracked just by using that vortex. The other one is flowing counterclockwise, and it's bringing us the information of our entire lineage, everything that came before us that brought us to this now in our being. And you can literally track family dysfunctions um, from that as well. Then we have the um, the Kundalini, which starts at the root chakra and works its way up. It looks like a chain, and it weaves itself around the chakras back and forth, and it serves to both, well, its everyday job is to modulate the energy uh, amongst the chakras and to help keep them balanced. Well, when our Kundalini is not working very well, particularly our upper chakras don't stay balanced, and we might have issues of distribution of energy through our body that get um, messed up or out of balance. And then when the kundalini does rise up and and connects fully, then we get into our we are, we're so balanced and we're so energetically humming, I call it, then that we can literally see everything out from outside of our body. We can literally look at everything from a whole different perspective and see everything very clearly. It's kind of like looking from the eyes of an eagle. Some some cultures might uh, relate it to that. Um, then we have, um, we also have surrounding all of that, and this is the short version, <laughs> is the external field, and it has two layers. The top of the chakras, there's another aspect to the chakras, actually actually lock into the inner part of the external field, and the two big vortexes, the aspect one and the lineage one, actually lock into the upper, outside part of that field. And then from there, um, they connect to the next bodies. The first one is the emotional body, and it, it responds directly to our emotional experience in this in, in this life. Every time we have it, our emotional body is, is participating uh, or, or becoming healthier or more damaged, depending on our emotional state. Um, above that is the mental body, and this is where you find beliefs, uh, belief systems, thought forms. Um, a lot of people are very inflamed because they use, overuse their mentality and don't trust their instinctual nature more. Um, above that is the intuitive body, and it, and it doesn't usually uh, have dysfunctions. It might get out of alignment, but the intuitive body, believe it or not, is usually really a- accessible. Um, above that, then, are the two what I call the causal bodies. They're kind of like pontoons on a boat. They are off to either side of this stack of bodies. And they're a harmonic octave point, but they're also the bridge. That's why there's two of them. They're a bridge between our human and our divine natures, and they're constantly um, assisting in keeping our balance. Above that, then, and these all actually nest uh, in our bodies, but you can separate them out to work on them. The um, above that then is the um, soul body, and the soul body is usually always perfect. And the, uh, there's a field of energy around that that um, where you can actually find karmic energies that are at play. You can find old karmic energies that are just blocking the field, but were already dealt with some some many lives ago. And um, those things can 
keep a person or a soul from actually realizing its its true journey because they're not able to see very well um, what direction to go. Their dis, uh, their energy is not running well. So, um, and that's just a general. Oh, there's a lot of stuff in between, but it's only a two hour show. So. <laughs> um, that's kind of the basic anatomy, and um, what's really cool is when you fix anything outside of this reality, and then you work with the physical body last, uh, the repairs will stick because the energy anomalies that were contributed to it in the first place are gone. You know, a lot of people have this belief. I mean, this is what we're taught with Western medicine: is that if you fix the physical body, then your issues are going to go away. Um, you know, like I really incorporate a lot of Chinese medicine, especially the emotional part. That's really, I feel, where I shine is bringing into the, what the emotional pieces are, the mental emotional pieces. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and I'll make comments about a person's ability to plan, as an example, which is controlled by the gallbladder. And they'll go, ah, well, I don't have a gallbladder. It's like, yeah, you also can't plan anything. And people have this belief <laughs> that if you chop something out, it's going to, you know, make it so that you're not going to experience the same problem anymore. Actually, though, that's not true because the energy is still there. And that's what people don't realize. A lot of times when I'm looking inside of a body, I actually, I'll, I'll usually get a, some sort of an intuitive clue, but um, you, I've often had to ask, do you still have this organ? Because the energy is still there and it's dysfunctional. You know, and and so I'll usually, instead of just expounding about their gallbladder issues, I might say, you know, this is looking dysfunctional. Did you have this removed or is it still there? Because I can't tell sometimes. That's, how, that's mm-hmm. how strong the energy is. Oh, I totally agree. But, I mean, I've had people that have had um, cancer and they're like, well, you know, I got that taken care of. And it's like, well, okay, so you got your body taken care of, but you haven't dealt with the emotional part, so where do you want it to appear next? Well, not only that, Rita, but metastases will actually hang out in the external field um, around or above the area that was affected in the physical body. Uh, I I discovered that, you know, I want to say by accident, but you know how that is. And mm-hmm. I was working with some, some somebody came to me. She had, she was in her third round of breast cancer, and uh, she said, "I don't know why this keeps coming back. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do, you know." And she was so earnest to do her part. And I said, "Well, let me have a look around and see what I can find." And I and I merged with her field because that's what you do when you do this when you touch the light the way that I teach it. And and I looked around, and all of a sudden I see this series of spots in her in her external field kind of close to her body and I was like whoa these are these are metastases this is the energy of the cancer that's still in the field and that's why she keeps getting it because that hasn't been dealt with so I cleared that out and she never had a problem again yay yeah and so you know we we put too much emphasis on the physical and not enough on the rest of the story but I think people <clears throat> You know, other than you and me and my listeners and and the smart people that kind of get it, you know, they there's such a lack of understanding of the impact of addressing issues in the subtle body. Yeah, because we we can't use our general normal human senses to to um, experience it. We have to do it some other way, and that's scary for people. And and if you can't see it or measurement, it must not be real, right? That's right. Uh, not. <laughs> <laughs> right, there's no such thing as ghosts, there's no such thing as all kinds of stuff. UFOs, conspiracy theories, you know, none of that. It's <laughs> we're just crazy. Oh wait. I am <laughs> My 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 motto this year is weird is wonderful. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah. Um let's see, where do I want to go? So one of the things that you talked about in your book is chords. And I don't know that there are that many people that talk about chords. I mean, I talk about chords, but I did ever write about it. I don't mm-hmm. think. I, don't I, I did. I wrote about stuff in that book that nobody will talk about because oh. it's scary for people, and people, you know, they so want to know, but they so don't want to ask because that makes it real. 
and people that do know don't want to go there because for whatever reason. And and I just decided, what the heck, I'm laying it out. <laughs> but I was afraid that people would take the whole book that way, and that wasn't you know wasn't what I wanted. But cords are cords are they're they're more than one kind, and and actually we can have cords left over from past lives. They look like little shriveled up vines. Um, but cords are are connections to other people that we get for different reasons. For instance, if we're in a codependent relationship, you can bet we're corded to each other. And a cord looks like like an energy hose um, that's attached in different places of the body, usually in the pelvic area, sometimes in the chest or in the in the mid back. And they literally suck energy from us. It's like a it's like a siphon hose. And it's a and it's not something that people do on purpose because they mean to. It's an energy thing that happens. It's an energy response. That connection that you make or you intend to make with somebody, somebody can cord you because they're very possessive or um, you know not very nice, <laughs> but they want you all to themselves or or, what, or they're jealous or whatever. That can you can get cords that way. You can get cords when you have indiscriminate sex with people. You may still be connected to that person indefinitely until you until you do, and you don't just cut them. They have to come out by the root. Otherwise, they repair themselves. Yay! Kind of, yeah, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> it's kind of like a doing psychic surgery because some cords are so well rooted. You have to be really careful you don't disrupt the whole energy field um, when you take them out. And, and it's really interesting with cords is the more recent they are, the more large and viable they look. And then the older they are, like I said, some past line ones are shriveled up. Maybe they disconnected, but the root's still there. And so you've got interferences in the in the um, mostly most often that happens in the pelvic area. So um, and people, I've seen courting, particularly um, in when people have had a lot of experience around shamanic practices or um, mm. or uh, you know those kind of things. There's a lot of uh, often a lot of not all the time. Don't, I don't want to make anybody mad. But a lot of times there's a lot of sexual interaction, uh, the the male power thing, um, and then sometimes uh, I've seen them actually stalking people in the ethers, and mm-hmm. and you have to get rid of them <laughs> that way. There, there's all kinds yeah. of attachments we can get from relationships we have, so we want to make sure that we have healthy, happy relationships, and that we're very careful that that we're not giving our power away because it's all an illusion anyway. We can't really give it away except by perception but other people would certainly like to take it. Do you know my favorite thing about cords? Is that that? when you take them out, inevitably, whoever they belong to, that person, and this is my rule of thumb, and I tell my clients every time, it's like, okay, so I'm pulling out these cords, and you will hear from this person within three days. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they'll show up. (laughs) Uh, Not always. And and it's just a final, well, what about me? And it's like, goodbye, <laughs> see ya, you're no good for me, whatever. And maybe they were. Maybe there was a time when that relationship was just wonderful, and it was time for it to be over. And it's it's time to let go, and sometimes the reason people can't let go is because they're still courted. Mhm. Exactly. Um I mean, my feeling, you know, I I agree with what you say, but I also feel like uh, sometimes they just want to reconnect because they want to re-suck energy. Yeah, they don't know why they're doing it or why all of a sudden they're thinking about you again. They just, uh, all of a sudden, it's like, wait a minute, I don't feel connected anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, because the energy's not there. Uh But then I tell them, it's like, and then you just need to think, Dr. Rita told me about that. Now I can laugh, because, you know, as opposed to being upset, like, oh, my, my ex-husband just called me up. And as opposed to being scared, it's like, no, we just took out all these cords. Expect the phone call and then laugh, because now you know that he has been de- this decorded. And it gives them so much freaking power <laughs> when they get that phone call, let me tell uh-huh. you. <laughs> That's true. But I think cords are really... Um, Important is our court something? I mean, we'll get into the you know the more kind of techniquey stuff later. Um, but are cords something that we can notice ourselves, and are they something that we can take out ourselves? 
We can, but you have to be really, really aware. And I, I don't want to kick in everybody's imaginations on this subject. Okay. But um, but you can, yes. Um, the thing about cords is you don't just rip them out. I mean, sometimes you literally have to lay the field open, and they have a root that's a little bit like a corkscrew. It's not very long, but it's, it, like, hooks into your system. And you've got to take that out, and you've got to destroy the root so it can never, ever, ever hook back up again, you know. And And then you have to repair the field all the way underneath where that was hooked in, and then close the field back up and therefore repair the leak. So um, it's not something that that most people would know to do for themselves, but if you know how to do it, it's not hard. But most people are not able to access themselves to that kind of degree. We have too many things in our own way to see ourselves that clearly. But I can give you some symptoms. Um, okay. So that you know, maybe that would help. Um, mm-hmm. uh, often cords will cause ups and downs in physical energy, and also in mental and emotional energy. Um, sometimes things will be going just great, and everything will, will just kind of crash and burn. Um, you might not be able to focus or concentrate or make a decision. Darn it! Or um, you know, um, those are some of the major um, symptoms of being corded. Now, it doesn't mean just because you're having those symptoms that's what's happening, but it, it is it is a set of symptoms that's absolutely almost guaranteed to go with being corded. And and it it, it also um, also is hard to find clarity. It's hard to really get a grip because because somebody's pulling your energy, you don't have as much to work with. And and the flow of your energy that would normally regenerate you is being drawn away, so your whole energy field is skewed, and therefore you're not getting all of your intuitive perceptions the way you normally would. And so if you're finding that your, in, your intuitive nature is being interfered with, your energy levels are wonky, you know, you can't focus, can't make a decision, yeah, you probably have a cord or two. What if you start, like, thinking about somebody or a situation, you know, start having just kind of obsessive thoughts? Would that be associated with cords as well, or could it be associated with yeah, cords? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, but usually when you're obsessing, it's because you're the one courting them. You can court other people just by your, your, your you know, what we what we put out, we get back in one form or another, and if we get obsessive about somebody, we can unintentionally cord them to us and what if that person was the absolute worst thing that could ever happen to us, and then we're hooked into their nature? You know, um, we have to be really, really careful what we put out. And besides, if we're obsessing about somebody, that is a really unhealthy way to try and start a relationship. And we better look at what we think we need and give it to ourselves first so that we don't think we need that from anybody else. Yeah. I just lost my train of thought, so I'm going to move along here. Um, Let's see. All right, so I'm going to ask this. This was in the chat room, and you can say it's too long and involved, and I think we'll be okay. They can get the book. Um, But the question is, and it's from Kiwi, uh, is there a process you can share for removing cords by their root? Yeah, basically you make a small incision in the energy field where that is, and you kind of open it up. Now, you have to be really, really careful when you're merged that far into somebody's field because any if, you're, if your own act isn't together, all of that transfers and becomes part of theirs too. So don't be doing this if you haven't dealt with your own stuff. Just clear, got to say that up front. All right. So you lay the you lay the energy field open about an inch or two right there where the root is, and you kind of take it and you twist it counterclockwise uh, about a, a half a turn, and then you twist back the other way about a quarter turn, and usually it pops right out, and then you just have to transmute the root, basically destroy it, and then close the field back up after you've repaired it. You have to you have to harmonize the entire area back to normal before you close it up. Uh, if you close it up and it's still is still injured, you could actually cause physical sickness. So this isn't stuff that everybody needs to run around doing, but it is doable. Are cords, do they go far into the body, or do they just kind of on the surface? Both. 
it depends on the degree of it, how old it is, how viable it is. Um, when they're new and really viable, they're often really deep, but the older they get, they kind of shrivel up and the connection isn't as isn't as strong or isn't vital, but it's still there. You know, it's more like a thorn in your foot. So why, I mean, not that I ascribe to this, but why not cut cords? Because they're still attached and they'll repair themselves. They'll They'll find the other half and reconnect. Okay. Most people think that just cutting them does it. I mean, that's the general school of thought. But since I can see this stuff, you know, I used to, I started out that way. I'd cut them, and the person would come back again with the same symptoms, and I'd look in their field, and there was that cord. I'm like, why didn't this go away? Well, because I didn't do it right. And and that's why people get recorded um, often is because um, that or, or that energy will seek its own kind and it will reconnect because that is the nature of energy. Energy will seek to harmonize with with what's relative to it. I'm looking at the clock and um we got plenty of time, so I'm going to change topics on you. Let's talk about implants. What the heck are implants and where do they come from? Well, there's different kinds. There are etheric implants that are made of energy, and there are what I call hard copies that are actually um, some sort of a solid material that has been put in the body. Um, implants can have lots of different purposes. They can be data gatherers. They can be um, they can bring information. They can they can transmit information, and they can also be used as tracking. Um, usually the uh, the etheric implants are are more information gathering and um, they can be a nuisance and they can actually implants can actually particularly the etheric kind can actually cause physical pain in in that area of the body and once you get rid of the the etheric implant then the pain goes away also um, but they can also be placed inside the physical body in any number of locations. Um, back of the scalp, in the any part of the ears, the behind the ears are in the flat, the pinea, which is the flat part of the ear. They they can be up in the brain, they can be um, inserted into the core of the body, um, and the the sources of them. The etheric implants are generally galactically oriented. There's some other dimensional um, reality of beingness that is. Um, just looking for information. They're not. They don't really hurt anything, except that they do cause problems in the energy field, and that you know. And so you start to have physical symptoms. The uh, the hard copies. There's a couple of schools of thought. Um, whether they're ET oriented or whether the government puts them in there. Um, for the most part, uh, what I've seen and felt and experienced is that they're they're ET oriented. Usually, people that are contact contactees or abductees will often have implants. And they're not necessarily a bad thing. You know, some of them are. I mean, you don't want to be wearing a tracking device around. On the other hand, if something's keeping your body balanced and it's bringing you constant flow of information, well, that may not be a bad thing. So, you know, there, there's all kinds. And, and, yes, they can be disabled and disarmed without having to be physically removed. Besides the fact that they harmonize with the physical body. And, like, when they're placed in the ears, a lot of times those hard copies will actually become a part of the cartilage, and it's impossible to separate them out without taking half the ear off. So uh, it's better just to leave them where they're at and just turn them off. <laughs> and, yes, it can be done, and no, not everybody knows how to do it. Um, it's an energy thing. Are a lot of people affected by implants? Not really. How common I mean, is it? it it's, it's not uncommon, but not everybody has them, and I don't even know what the percentage would be. Um because of the nature of what we do, we run across it more than we would normally, you know. So I don't really know how to call a percentage on that. Okay. I have to tell you, it's like I've had people come and go, well, you know, I got these implants, and they're like pointing around on their body. And even, you know, you do this work, and it just is so weird because some people it's like, oh, well, you have these implants, and it's just like I'm there you know, I'm the one making the call because it's just like right there. There's this thing in your leg. I don't even know what it is. And then there are other people that will come and it's like, well, I got these implants and blah, 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 blah. And my BS meter just goes, bah, 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 bah. you well, know, so I don't know if it's them it's, or me. <laughs> well, and that's a good that's a good way to be because sometimes um, it is us. Sometimes, 
you know, things seem incredible to us, but then I listen to the things that I say to people, you know, that I say on these interviews, and I think people must think I'm really whacked. So I can't judge anybody else because that's their experience, you know, but a lot of times it's fair talking, you know, or imagination um, because we don't know enough about things, and, and so people start having experiences and they assume the worst, and, and that becomes the reality. And so it doesn't mean they're right or wrong. It just means that, um, you know, that's what somebody believes. Okay, well, let's have a look. Or, I, Well, that's not my information, and that's what I would say. You know, okay, um, I'm not locating what you're telling me, and I'm pretty good at this. Um, so once you start talking about their experiences, there's a lot more to the picture, you know, and you can find out what you really need to work on. It's usually pretty obvious. But um, the implants are often there and can can be disengaged. But you're saying tracking. I mean, because, you know, one of the things that I do a lot is entity spirit release work, I guess is the proper way of saying it, you know, which has to do with attached entities, which you talk about in your book. You know, and and in the same breath, there are people that it's like, well, my life totally sucks and I'm not working and my life sucks and I must have an attached entity. I mean, in your observation, what kind of things go on with people that actually do have issues with entity attachment? Well, first of all, entities are a lot less common than people think. You know, I I stopped teaching weekend classes because when I did that, and I did a day of weirdness, I called it, the last day, all of a sudden everybody thought everybody had entities and all these other problems, you know, and, and it got to be so ima- such imagination driven I stopped I stopped doing it. Um but just because your life is going bad doesn't or not the way you want it doesn't mean you have entities. It just means that you need to get your act together. You know, if your world's upside down right yourself. That's just fact. Okay. So we can complain and we can look for outside reasons, but bottom line, usually the fact is that we we're not together enough, and we've got we if we change our mind and change our perceptions, we can change our lives. Now, when there really is an entity, <laughs> that's another story. No matter what we do or how hard we try, um, if we have if we have a a, a really good attitude, um, things just aren't working out. We might get physically sick. We might get, um, we might even have physical uh, problems, and um, no matter what we try to do, whether it's uh, on any level, it, it just isn't working. Things are not working right, and um, and often we're tired a lot. Often we get angry or we get real emotional. We don't know why. We can't track it. You know, there there are any number of responses you can get when there are entities involved because there are different kinds of entities and they affect us different ways or to different degrees. So, um, you know, we can pick them up just by being around uh, an area where there's uh, the kind of energy that attracts them. If if we have drug and alcohol abuse problems and we're constantly anesthetizing ourselves, well, we can pick them up very easily. They love that kind of stuff. They love that kind of addiction energy. Um, and that, and when we're and when we're messed up, then we're not in enough together to be. We're very vulnerable to them in in those kinds of states. Um, we can also get them um, for, for any number of reasons. There, there. In the book, I actually illustrated some of them, and and explained the difference between all of them. So, um, but they can get get gone too. There, it just depends on which kind they are. It takes a little bit different kind of technique, and I didn't go over that a lot in the book. And that's not something I'm going to give out without really darn well training somebody, because um, <laughs> you can end up taking them home, and you don't really want to do that. Um, I do ghost hunting, and one of the questions I'm asked, and I'm going to get your opinion, mm-hmm. is there's this belief that you can get an attached entity, okay, not somebody that just follows you home, but that you can get a full-blown attached entity just by going into a haunted house, like a really haunted house, not just a Well, it depends on house. what's causing the haunting. Is it a, is it a, a disenfranchised spirit, or is there a portal in the place? You know, there could be any number of reasons why it's haunted. It may not, it may not just be spirits. It may be that that house was built... Um, in an old ceremonial area or an old graveyard area or that there's some horrid trauma happened there 
and then somebody built a neighborhood 100 or 200 years later. You know, you don't know always. So, um, yes, it's possible to pick something up, but that's a rare, a very rare occasion. If there's an open portal because of some just, just terrible trauma that's happened there, um, yes, you can pick something up and it, it can follow you home or, or attach to you. But just going ghost hunting, no, it's not at all likely that that's going to happen. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that think that. And it's like, no. Well, that's because the idea of ghosts is scary, but the fact is all they are is us on the other side <laughs> in some kind of a mood or another or some, you know. It, when, when we transition to the other side, it's a process, and sometimes we don't realize that we have or sometimes... Um, we, you know, sometimes there's things that we feel are unfinished, or sometimes we don't know how to go any farther, and and there's so there's different degrees of why spirits are still around and 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 what they do in the so-called haunting. There's it's it's just beings like us who have gotten over the other side and don't know what to do about it. Mm-hmm. So, um, no, they don't getting... come home with us. They're they're specific to their location. Well, we're getting close to the top of the hour, so why don't we go ahead, if I can find the right button, do, 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 because it means I have to read, <laughs> oops, um, and take a quick break, because I want to talk about the Star Walker people, because I've never talked it, I've never seen anybody bring up that topic. <laughs> oh, sound good? Okay. All right, hold on. I'm Dr. Rita Louise. We're talking to Meg blackburn Losi about her book, Touching the Light, uh, What Miracles Are Made Of. Her website is spiritlight, that's L-I-T-E dot com, and we'll be back after these words from our sponsors. Just Energy Radio with your host, Dr. Rita Louise, will return right after these messages. yourself and venture into the realm of the unconscious mind with my Meditating on the Kabbalah Guided Imagery Audio CDs. Discover who you are and what you want in life. Meditating on the Kabbalah can help you to open, clear, and revitalize the energetic pathways of your subtle being. They will support you in your spiritual quest by helping you to access the profound insights and inner guidance you need as you work in alignment with your highest good. Let them help you to release negative thoughts and emotions and clear away any limitations that may keep you from experiencing your full potential. Walk down the path to health, healing, understanding, and enlightenment with Meditating on the Kabbalah. Order your copy today at www.soulhealer.com. Treat yourself to some soulful nourishment and an expansion of your concept of who and what you are. Avoiding the cosmic 2x4 brings the whole subject of energy medicine into vivid reality, where it provides you with fascinating insights and a deeper understanding of who you are as an energetic being. Avoiding the cosmic 2x4 will provide you with a roadmap to understanding the influences subtle energy plays in our experience of physical, mental, and emotional health and the manifestation of disease in the body. It will also help you to realign your body, mind, and spirit so that they function in harmony with one another, thus allowing you to experience inner peace, self-awareness, and centeredness. You can get your copy of Avoiding the Cosmic 2x4 at www.soulhealer.com. How would you like to live long and enjoy great health? How about creating solid bones and whiter teeth? Strengthen your heart and eyes and have radiant, youthful-looking skin. There is an ancient health and longevity secret that has been used for millennia in Egypt, India, and China that can help you achieve this. For the first time in the modern world, Pearlsium brings this ancient wellness secret to you. For more information about Pearlsium, visit www.productsforthesoul.com. 
Before we get back to the show, I would like to thank all of you for tuning in to Just Energy Radio. Many of the people I've helped over the years were listeners just like you. If you're at a junction in your life, don't stand alone at this important time. Call me or send me an email. We can set up a private consultation so that you too can experience health, healing, and wholeness in your life. To find out more about the services I offer, visit www.soulhealer.com. And now back to Just Energy Radio with Dr. Rita Louise. Hello and welcome back to Just Energy Radio. I'm Dr. Rita Louise and thank you all for staying tuned to the second hour of the show. Don't forget, Just Energy Radio is brought to you by SoulHealer.com and the Institute of Applied Energetics. Newsletter, www.soulhealer, or, right, www.justenergyradio.com. And do check out all of our archives. So we've been talking to Meg blackburn Losey about her book, Touching Light, What Miracles Are Made Of. Meg, it's like I feel like we have one brain, but we're separated by miles. This has just been amazing. Um, we had a question in the chat room, so I figured I might as well ask it now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says, and this is from Debbie25. It says, Dr. Meg, what do you advise for neurotoxins from parasites and the high anxiety they produce? Well, first of all, you have to treat the parasites. You know, and and do a lot towards getting your body cleaned out. You know, um, a lot of water, um, and it depends on what kind of parasites, what they've affected. And um, you don't have to have that indefinitely. You know, if you treat the parasite problem, you're going to get rid of the other stuff. You know, um, for instance, something like Lyme's, uh, Lyme's disease, that's, that's actually um, got parasites and bacteria and all kinds of things involved, can last a while, but... Um, if you're feeling anxious as a result of that, chamomile works really well um, to help with that. Um, but I would advise highly, you know, metaphysically speaking, a lot of times people don't go to the doctor when a simple uh, treatment or a series of treatments would really help. Um, so I advise if you haven't treated the parasites, Debbie, go ahead and do that and then work towards getting your body um, back on track. So your observation is that Lyme's disease is parasite-based? Well, yeah, it it has um, factors like Ehrlichia and some of the other things that actually turn into, they create spirochetes that float around in your blood and make your body hurt. Um, it's also uh, bacterial. So, for instance, some parasites you have to treat with antibiotics as, as well as, um, you know, treat the, treat the parasitic aspect as well. So um, it could be that you haven't had a full enough treatment if you have treated it. But just going to the health food store and buying something for parasites is not necessarily going to take care of it. Certain ones require certain types of, of treatments. And, that, and that's one particular area where I say go get what you need. Don't just try to fix it because some of them can cause a lot of problems. Exactly. That's, that's and, that biosphere thing. <laughs> You're a naturopath. <laughs> what would you recommend on something like that? Well, I mean, you know, trying to identify what kind of parasite you have. I mean, I agree with you, and then treating that kind of parasite. Yeah. Um, You know, my big thing is, you know, especially if you don't know what it is, doing it as broad spectrum as possible, but then many people believe, well, if I do it once, it's going to be better, but that's not the reality. It's that you have to, this sounds really gross, but you have to kind of treat it like fleas. You know, you don't just flea bomb your house once. You do it twice, maybe three times. Exactly. And so, you know, you have to go ahead and take care of it, you know. And But, see, I never connected Lyme with bacteria and parasites. So that's like, hmm, yeah. something well, I mean, interesting I've, to I've look had at. It. I have it now, and I had it seven or eight years ago. And seven or eight years ago, um, when I was tested, they did all of these different tests. I was really expensive. But um, they did all these different tests, and they tested for different stuff. And not only did I have the, the bacteria that caused the, or whatever, <clears throat> I had also the, the Ehrlichia that caused the spirochetes, and it was just making me miserable. 
And so I, it was a multi-type treatment. It, n- no one thing would have dealt with it. And I had to go, I had to do three different kinds of things to get rid of everything that had happened because one dick bit me. So what I'm saying is you really need to know what you're treating because you're talking about neurotoxins. Okay, what's causing that? If you've treated and you're still having symptoms, then you didn't get the bug. Mm-hmm. Pure and simple. Exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. Let's move on. And so, yeah, and if people want to ask a question in the chat room, we'll be happy to, you know, I'll try to fit them in. You know, we'll we'll work it into uh, the schedule. I'm How's perfectly that? open to that. That's great. I love talking with people. Okay. So where we left off <laughs> was the concept, and you called them star walkers. Mm-hmm. I call them dimension jumpers, but I think we're talking about the same concept. Um, first of all, could you explain to listeners what you mean by that? Well, that's in the walk-in category. And first, I want to preface this by something. Mm-hmm. We're talking about all the weirdness, <laughs> the, the real, the, what I consider real weirdness. Um, but this work is so much not just that. This is one factor of it. So I just want to make that really clear because this work has the potential to create miracles, and it has nothing to do with some of these things. These are just things that come up along the way. You know, when you work with thousands of people, you run into things. So um, that being said, um, the Star Walkers are in the category of, of that I wrote about uh, called walk-ins. And people use the, the term walk-in like they do, you know, hi, how are you some days. And, and there are there are many types of walk-ins, um, and a walk-in is basically some, uh, another being, another soul energy that comes in and, and shares or takes over uh, someone else's body. And a star walker is, I think, are actually very cool because... They they'll come in and they're attracted to people that are really high uh, vibrational consciously. They don't just like pop into anybody, and they actually transmute their energy and will come in with permission and share a body. They'll merge with someone. They'll ass- what I call assimilate, and and actually like teach somebody all about energy or or a certain technology or a certain uh, high mental subject or uh, it could be any number of purposes that they come. And what they're doing is they're coming to our planet to help out. And so that when they get us, because when we get to certain frequencies, we're sending like beacons out all over creation. Hey, this being is locked in. You know, we're, we're working from within the one rather than at it. And so everything that's within the one can hear that and, and, and is attracted to it if they've got a mission to be of assistance somehow, and they'll come in and they'll um, actually share a body for a while. When that purpose is done, generally they'll leave. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I've only ever met two. You won't meet very many. My this is a very rare thing. See, but I like talking about weird stuff. You I know, do too. We don't get to talk about <laughs> weird stuff on the show. You know, it's always like... I'll get as weird regular. as you want. I just want my healing work to stand on its own merit and not this. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Um, all right, well, then I'll skip the reptilian question. <laughs> no, that's, you know, that's fine. I don't mind talking about it. I, I just don't want people to get worried or scared or think that touching the light is about this. This These are things that I've run into, into as I've dealt with people over 15 years. And there are some weird things. You know, here's how I see it. Okay, Rita, creation is made of a lot of neighborhoods, a lot of dimensions. I call them neighborhoods, all right? And everybody has their place in creation, and that means light stuff, dark stuff, and everything in between. And sometimes somebody just gets in the wrong neighborhood and doesn't know what to do with it or else is having way too much fun and forgets to go home. So I look at this really lightly because you can't hold your breath and deal with it. You've got to really be centered in the light to, to deal with any of these things. Um, are there reptilians? Yes, there are. And I've seen three different kinds, um, and none of them are particularly a good thing. There are ones that actually uh, take over a body and actually uh, are are on the planet 
it and causing a lot of problems, and that body is usually having a lot of problems as well. Um, that life in general is having a lot of problems, a lot of negative or or um, conflictual kind of things. Um, there are others that influence from the outside and, and just bring in, they'll hang around the outside of somebody's field and cause all kinds of problems and kind of manipulate people like a puppet. And then there's another kind that will actually assimilate with a person and take over their life without that person losing their memories. They won't realize they've been taken over, but everything really goes to hell in a handbasket when that happens. I've seen that once. So, I mean, these are extremely rare uh, occurrences um, when they take over a body like that, but it does happen. And usually um, when they've taken over a body completely, you can see in the eyes that person actually looks kind of reptilian and and has a, there's a certain energy you can recognize once you've become aware of it. My husband has concluded that there's definitely people in our government that are reptilian, and I'm not going to mention any names, but uh, look at the eyes. You can see it. <laughs> well, that may be, that may be, uh, there may be some viability to that, but um, those people haven't asked me to look at them, so I'm not going to go there. <laughs> you can. I do. Both. You know, well, it's like, hey, look at that. It's like, well, yeah, hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, they're, they're, you, and often, well, usually when the reptilians are influencing somebody, they're influencing somebody that's in a, pe- a place of power that can make an impact. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll, we'll get, move off of all the weird stuff because I asked all my questions. Um, <laughs> but this is something that I have been asked a lot lately, and I would love for you to share um, your opinion on it. But it's how we can protect our space from picking up all of the energy around us. Our space or ourselves? Well, I mean, I consider our energy field our space. Okay, That's you don't like our house, you mean ourselves. Okay. Correct. Uh, th- there's an exercise that I teach that if you do this, nothing, none of the things that we were just talking about can ever touch you. Because believe me, I've worked with some of the ickiest stuff you've ever seen, <laughs> not because I asked for it. But um, all you have to do is kind of close your eyes for a minute and project your awareness into your very core and right into the center of your being. It looks kind of dark at first, and then when you get towards the center, um, you'll come to a place where there's, if there's a small golden light. It's kind of almost a little bigger than a spark. And as you as you access that, then just start to breathe into it. And with every breath you take, that spark will start to grow. And as you breathe, it'll continue to grow until it's completely filled your body. And then as you continue to breathe, it'll start to overflow and literally create a field of light golden energy all around your body. And, and your body's filled all the way to the core. So basically what you're doing is calling up the source light that you're created of and projecting that outward so that you're filled and there is nowhere for anything that is not of the light to access you. Will that keep people from experiencing, um, you know, I'm going to say the negative energy or the fear energy, that might be a better word to use, that is so rampant on the planet right now? Well, fear is fear, and it's nothing more than a what if. It's not a reality, you know. But it will protect you from anything anything negative, anything that doesn't belong in your frequencies, anything that's not of the light. Nothing nothing can access you if you've got your light uh, extended like that. Great. All right. I'm flipping my paper over. Uh, okay. Why is it that someone doesn't heal? You know, there are several reasons. Um, Sometimes people use being sick to get attention because they don't know any other way. Um, Sometimes they they come to healers and want Band-Aids, but they really don't want to get over their stuff. Um, And sometimes they're not meant to. And that's not usually the case, but sometimes it's just a part of somebody's um, journey to go through that illness for whatever reason. And 
so there you know there are a multitude of reasons why we wouldn't but um generally speaking it's because we're not accepting the healing we're asking for so what did you mean by they're not meant to or are they using it as kind of like an exit point well it's not like somebody's consciously using anything for anything sometimes mm-hmm. in their in their timeline in the journey of that soul um it may be an exit point and and maybe it's maybe that's what it's about. Sometimes it's not ours to fix. You know, sometimes um, it's uh, it, that per, that soul has done what it's come here to do, whatever that is, and, and they're going to check out. Other times, somebody, for instance, has an illness, and it affects everyone around them, and that ripples outward infinitely. And maybe that illness was for nothing more than the benefit of all the people around that person. You know, we we don't know on a conscious level. Um, I did talk to Meg on the phone while we were trying to deal with this technical difficulty stuff, and she just wanted to thank all of you for, uh, you know, letting her have this time with you. I hope you all enjoyed the time with her, but I did let her go um, because I didn't know how long this was going to take um to do it can you hear me now jim can you hear me now i'm talking away so you can hear me okay so i don't really have anything to talk about uh <laughs> rita when i see ghosts they seem to want me to look back at them but i'm afraid to hmm well, you know, it really depends on uh, what kind of a haunting you have. I'm just trying to think of, um, okay, I had to think about this a second, but now I, I have an answer. Um, many times, or my feeling is, my impression is, is that when they want you to look at them, it's because they want to be recognized, they want to be acknowledged. Um, you know, sometimes they might have something that they want to communicate to you or to communicate to you, to communicate to someone else or to do something, but they're really looking for acknowledgement. Um, one of the things about that happens to ghosts, I mean, if you think about it, ghosts are people too. They just don't have bodies anymore. You know, one of the things that happens is that, you know, they, they don't know how to communicate with the living, and so sometimes they will – look to communicate to anybody that can see them, period. So, like, if you think about um, Ghost with Whoopi Goldberg and uh, Patrick Swayze, it's like Whoopi was the only person that could see him. And so he went and interacted with her. So perhaps, Debbie, um, you are somebody that you that is just very open to seeing ghosts. Um, and so they're looking at you because they know you can see them. But the reality is is that most ghosts really aren't bad people. Um, I like to say, you know, there are people and some of them have issues, um, but many times they're just people. You know, Aunt Sally, Grandma, you know, a friend from high school that might have passed. I mean, it could just be anybody um, that you know or maybe not know that well that um, is just looking for some communication. I mean, and I've known people that have had a very bright light just as part of their nature and have attracted a lot of spirits to them, you know, not only because of their bright nature, but because, um, they, you know, but also because they can see them. Okay, well, there seems, okay, the next question, there seems to be quite a delay on chat room when we sent it to when others read it. Hmm. Okay, not a question to me. Okay, I'm chicken. Why? Okay. But, Debbie, there really isn't anything to be afraid of. I mean, I do ghost hunting, but I'll tell you what, I'm like the biggest chicken. <laughs> like, I won't go into rooms if they're dark. I inevitably turn the lights on i have gone to a ton of haunted houses i have stayed in like haunted bed and breakfast breakfast places and they'll like 
stick me in the haunted room. It's like, here, you get the haunted bed. It's like, thanks, the freaking haunted bed, just so I can stay up all night and not sleep. But I find that it's the startle factor. It's other things, and it's not the ghosts that scare me. Because when you just say, hey, you know, you're a person that just doesn't have a body, it's not scary anymore. It's just like some guy or some girl or whatever. <laughs> the living are enough to deal with. Well, actually, you know, the dead don't follow you around and they don't torment you, you know, and um, they don't necessarily want stuff from you in the same way that people that are living do. You know, they're not emotionally dependent on you. You know, one of the things that I do is I have my house very well sealed and protected. I don't want ghosts here. I don't like ghosts. I don't want them here. They can stay at other people's houses. They can stay out on the street. I don't really care. I don't want them in my house. And so that's one thing that I do to make my space safe. Do I send them to the light? Okay. Ghosts. Do I no, I don't do anything if I have someone who has an attached entity issue going on um and they want to work on it, they want to move that being out of their space. Yes, I will send them into the light. Um I mean, one of the things with ghost hunting in particular is that that's not part of and I'm going to say their job description. They are there to investigate. And so if someone is looking to have the entity removed or help them to go to their next step, you know, that's done in a separate thing. You know, so to just go and do healing on a ghost is not, you know, and there's a lot of uh, controversy about this. You know, it's not part of our agenda. I mean, sometimes the ghosts don't really want to go anyway, so... um you know, because it's funner here. Those are usually not the really nice ones, but, you know, but, you know, but sometimes ghosts are just here visiting. I've had my grandmother show up. I've had my ex-husband's dad show up. Um, we've had all kinds of people show up that we've known or not known. And, um, you know, and then they just go again, you know, and it's not like they're hanging around 24-7, you know, in wherever we are. So so there's a couple of other people. Well, I guess they're not really paying attention, but anybody else have any questions? Because we have – oh, actually, it's time. I get to play the ending music because there's two minutes left. So, guys um, – all right, Debbie, I got like 30 seconds that I can answer that. I think that uh, Meg's comment about doing the thing with the, the golden light that she talked about earlier in the show, that is one technique that I also use as well. Sometimes I'll advise a person to light a candle and then imagine the the halo of the candle getting larger and larger and larger because it's something that's very visual and makes it, you know, gives them something to look at, gives them something to focus on. Anyway, there's the music, which means I have to go. And um, thanks, guys, for, you know, hanging around and dealing with it. But before you go, one last announcement. Next week, cross your fingers that this happens. Uh, we have James Van Prague talking about what would it be like if you grew up in heaven. And Nick Redfern talking about the real men in black. So until next week, I'm Dr. Rita Louise. Please do thank Meg Blackborn Losey, the author of uh, Touching the Light, What Miracles Are Made Of, for coming on to the show today. Until next week, be blessed. Join host Dr. Rita Louise each week at this time for Just Energy Radio. Point your browser to www.justenergyradio.com.